So, a while ago I wanted to play Minecraft with some of my buddies in VR, yet I couldn't buy my own because I had no money. This brought about a VR headset that I custom designed, and while it wasn't wireless, it actually functioned. In this video, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to make a wireless headset, one that works a lot better than the janky one that you see before you. It had wires streaming down and the controller went to the headset. This caused for a lot of latency issues, and it also caused for me to trip over the wire occasionally down the line. We will start by making the headset, and in the future make a controller, and we will make a walking mechanism. So what do we have here? A lot of random gear. We have old and new. First we're going to start with some of the new products that we have. This is just a much larger screen that I found online. It actually is very cheap for how gigantic it is. As you can see, inside of this container is our old screen and the screen is much, much larger. This will make it a lot more fun to play video games, a lot more immersive. And we also have these guys for our eyes so we can have a better lens to make it all look really, really nice. We'll move that over to the side. This is all new stuff. This is a part of it. This is how we make it wireless. Simply, we just plug this in. Um, it'll. This is, this is basically an HDMI cable. And then this powers this guy. We'll leave all of this over to the side because we no longer need it. Out of, the, out of sight, out of mind. Next up, we have uh, the controller that plugs into the computer. This is how it becomes this is how we send everything over wirelessly this uh adreno micro uh, i have code in here that takes information in from radio and converts everything over to keyboard touch so that we can move and control everything this is basically how we are going to um, map our screen map everything next up we have the first ever version of a headset Terrible. <laughs> Pretty much garbage. This is not necessary. An HDMI cable would have been put into here, which will allow this thing to run. Inside, we see obviously that there is a screen. Obviously, it's a you know it's a VR headset. And you need a screen. Uh, I when I first built it, I did not put anything in for a nose, and you looked at the screen directly. There was nothing for your eyes. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna obviously remodel this completely. I don't know what is going on here. There's a lot happening. Like, and I, I mean, I mean, like a lot happening. Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ. Now I'm gonna go and I'm going to make an actual proper headset for this guy. So yeah, it'll it'll be good. It'll work out. It'll be nice. Okay, boys and girls, we've doubled our everything. <laughs> I've had this other 3D printer for a freaking really long time, and I just got it to work finally, and I printed out some calibration cubes. Uh, right here and it's coming along pretty nice calibration cubes were pretty good they, they came out almost exact which is what you want to see we got them working overtime baby making some good stuff right here it'll look it'll look fantastic I think I mean cool if it was honestly I prefer black and blue over white and red, but you know what? Opposite colors. Let's do it. Let's get it done. I ended up changing my mind and making it black and red. So, uh, it's definitely a mess right now. <laughs> I'm moving on to soldering. I have th all three pieces required to make the basis of the headset. And here I'll show you once again the first finished product of the headset. All right, so we got this guy. Um, obviously, it is not in a functional state. It's pretty much a prototype at the moment. So, giant battery pack in the front to actually power this thing wirelessly. We have um, huge ass uh, goggle lenses. A um, little bit of padding that I kind of just ripped and tore and put on here. Um, the front part is held together by one pressure. I really just pressure fit this stuff in so that and then it's to keep it stable um because i'm not sure if the pressure fit is good enough to hold it so just to make sure it functions um black duct tape <laughs> just to make sure it stays there 
Um, battery pack is held on via zip ties because I wanted to completely enclose it in plastic, but when I tried doing that, there's no way I was going to be able to remove the supports. I'm looking into getting another 3D printer, one that has like uh, supports that can be washed away, so that's pretty nice. Um, and as we can see here, these are little divots for where our electronics are going to go. So I need to get the three electronics in. And as a reminder, the three electronics are this gyroscope. Okay, we have a three-axis gyroscope, we have a nano, and we have our radio transceiver. So we're going to work on that now. Okay, I'm about halfway done. <laughs> I've got four beautifully colored uh, wires, and I need to make three more. Three more of these guys. I don't know why, but I feel like if I were to take a taste out of the orange um, protective coating on on these wires, it would taste good. Out of, out of all the wiring, the orange ones are the most appetizing to me. Okie dokie. Heat shrink tubing complete. Everything done. Before we get into the coating, i like to take a quick break to talk to you about my Patreon. Yes, that's right, I have a Patreon where I create machines of mass lunacy. You can become an immortal enthusiast for just $3 a month or a memento madman for $10 a month. You'll be able to see new updates and posts that come out before any videos do on the channel. And you'll be helping me to create better and better machines. If you would like to support my Patreon, link will be in the description. And let's get back to the video. So moving on to the coding, we're gonna break this down quickly into two into our two separate parts. And I'm gonna go through the coding really fast because it's you know extremely boring and no one really wants to be told about the code. Okay, so basically we have uh, our data and each one of these actually um, controls a different a different direction in our X and Y. So our A and B of our digital data, each of these is going to control some form of X or Y, whether it be X in the positive or negative or the Y positive and negative. Uh, we have a range, we have a threshold and center. This is just our digital input data. We have to initialize our gyroscope and all the axes. We also have to initialize our velocity in the X and Y. We set up our radio. We set up the address for the radio. We then construct our data package for the four bits of data that's going to be sent wirelessly. We then obviously set up the serial. We uh, set up our connections. We make sure that everything has been uh, successfully printed. We then write the radio. We write all the data, set it to zero. In our main loop, we obviously get the gyroscope axis data. We set it to our velocity in the X and the Y. We then have our velocity of X and Y get mapped to our data to be sent. We then write the data. We uh, print out the velocity in X and Y so that we can check it in the serial monitor. Uh, then what we do is we map the gyro to the range, we return its distance, and we send all of that over. Moving on to the receiver side, we of course have to set the radio to the pins. For here it is radio 9 and 10. We have to set its proper address. Uh, here we initialize all of our uh, values that we're going to be mapping to our digital data. We construct our data package again. We then read the data package. We set up different voids. This is for our, um, for basically our head to become the mouse. That's kind of, that's basically what we're doing. We're taking our mouse and we're kind of just mapping our head movements to it. We map our V of X and V of Y in this. But before we go here, let's move down to our void setup. In the setup, what we will be doing is we will be opening a serial port and we will be waiting for the serial port to connect. We then write the radio and make sure that it all works. We set up our reset data. This obviously will 
uh, reset all of our data if we ever lose anything. Basically, it resets everything back down to zero. In our main loop, we read the available radio. We then map our very new variables to our data variables. We then set our data variables to be in this kind of like reset range. Basically, these four lines of code are just so that we don't have any noise. We then write our head mouse now that we have all the data in the head mouse section. We have our velocity in the X, our velocity in the Y uh, calculated from our four different variables. We then have two if statements for if they're in a range that we do not like so that they are more or less set to zero. We then tell the mouse to move in the V in the velocity X, velocity Y. We then print out so that we can read it. And that's the end of our code. So I got the headset to work. It is on. It is in a horrible state. This guy functions fine. This guy works okay. And now I'm loading up Minecraft and then I'm going to head over to the computer um, and we will be able to test run this, see how it's working. But I have to connect the headset because as you can see, bright white light, nothing's going on in there. I have to connect it to the computer and then we can run it wirelessly i think it's gonna be pretty cool okay 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 so i'm going to be playing on the world that i usually play on so basically what i'm doing is i'm make, taking a software to split the screen into two separate parts so that in the game you won't be able to see it so that when in the game, you can see one screen because each eye needs its own individual screen. So that's that's the plan. That's the general plan that I'm going with. I'm uncertain of it because I didn't quite get it perfect. So it's kind of blurry as all hell. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So the game loaded up, but my preview was bad. <laughs> I don't know why. So, oh my god. All right. Oh, dude, no. I mean, yes, but also no. Oh, this is weird. Okay, I'm standing up. You're probably I'm you're I'm probably clipping. Why axis needs to be fixed cuz I'm I'm already at the ground. Oh. All right. Um What's bad about this? Graphics are phenomenal. Y-axis is slow on the uptake, quick on the down. I don't want that. Yeah, look at this. I barely even have to move my body in. All right, I need to change the Y-axis. First thing I should do is fix it to my face properly. Using my hands is definitely not the way to go. I can 3D print a couple cables and work. I have no means of moving yet. I can't, I can't walk forward. Um, I'm gonna attach shit. I'm gonna attach stuff to my feet to allow that, so I can like, like fake treadmill walk kind of. I'm thinking of using wheels. Oh, how weird to like walk forward. Okay, I consider this as of now a rousing success. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Oh my God. Okay. Oh okay. It works. I'm going to. Oh, I need to fix my eyeballs. I need to fix my eyeballs. That's what I need to fix. Jesus Christ, you're going to have to get contacts by the end of this. Oh, God.